this video I'm going to talk about a little camera tripod adapter that I milled recently. I bought a used camera recently, it's a small mirrorless Canon EOS M. One of the problems with it is that the door that you open up to get to the memory card and battery can't open if you have a tripod quick release plate attached to the bottom of the camera. So my solution to this was to create an intermediate plate that will basically move the mounting point over enough that the door can then open while you still have the quick release plate attached. One of the things I wanted to try was to do this 45 degree facing pattern because I thought it looked kind of cool and it turned out pretty neat. Another thing I tried to do on this project is to make it be machined on all sides so I wasn't going to have any just bare unmilled sides. I wanted it to look nice and I also wanted to make sure to chamfer all the edges so that it felt nice in the hand and that you could uh, handle it um, without getting any sharp edges. So this is my CAD design, and then it's probably worth walking through the cam process that I used for this because I was pretty happy with how the cam ended up. I used a half inch thick piece of stock, which I zeroed uh, in the Y axis to the fixed jaw. You can see that the part is sitting just a hair down from the top of the stock and otherwise uh, in the center along the X axis. So I started off with the 45 degree facing. After that, I do a, uh, an adaptive 2D adaptive clearing. The contour that I'm that I'm milling that I selected doesn't actually go to the bottom, so I had to adjust the height um, so that it would actually mill to the down far enough. Uh, in the stock to leave, you can see that I'm also leaving a negative amount of axial stock, and that's so that it goes down uh, far enough and clears far enough that when I flip it over and mill the other side, uh, I'm not going to have some very thin layer of metal there if I'm off by a couple thousands. Here's some footage of that adaptive clearing. Uh, I just put this in mainly so you could hear how the mill was sounding these days with these speeds and feeds, which are about 15,000 RPM, 0 0.0375 width of cut, and 0 0.15 inches depth of cut at about 30 inches per minute. Next I did a contour, and the contour is actually set up to run around the edge of the part at a slightly higher axial stock to leave, and so as a result it's not actually going to touch the floor of the part, it's just going to go around the walls and clean up those walls. Then I do an adaptive clearing for the pocket in the center, uh, and I, I leave a little bit of stock here so that I can then come in with a subsequent pass to do the contouring and clean up the edges. And again here I have the uh, stock to leave uh, set up so that it's not going to touch the uh, floor of the part as it's going around and cleaning up the edges. Uh, next I actually go in and do a um, 2D pocket and this is actually just going to clear up the floor of the part. I could have done a different type here, but I thought this would leave the nicest looking um, tool marks uh, because it's not, unlike adaptive, it's not going to have an unusual asymmetric pattern. And then finally I did a uh, drill operation with my chamfer mill just to uh, spot drill the holes. I'm going to drill out later on the drill press. And then finally I do a chamfer. To set up a chamfer for a tool path for a part that is already chamfered, uh, you do it like this. So uh, under the passes tab you can check chamfer. And then if, as long as you select the contour for the lower part of the chamfer, it'll create the correct toolpath. And this is the result after milling the top half of the part. And then the next thing I do is I actually flip the part along the x-axis. So you can see I'm rotating it here as if I was rotating it and then putting it back in the vise. And you'll notice my zero location has changed. The reason for that is that along Y, I still want to reference that fixed jaw of the vise. So I don't actually have to re-zero the Y axis at all. It'll just automatically uh, be in the correct spot. Now along the Z axis, my zero is the top of my parallels. 
So the first thing I do is I want to mill off most of that hat that's left on the part after flipping it. Uh, and to do that, you can actually do a 3D adaptive toolpath, but not select any uh, elements of uh, to machine, and then just set the heights so that they go down to the top of your model. And you can do multiple depths and other things, and it'll create an adaptive clearing toolpath that just clears away stock as if it was facing. This is actually a slightly different end mill. For no particular reason, I just switched to a three flute end mill that I had just to do something different. And so I ran at a slightly lower RPM. And then here's another 45 degree facing. I'll actually show you how to do it. If you go into the uh, Passes tab, you can adjust the uh, direction to 45 degrees. And then the final operation is the chamfer of the backside. Now this is why I was being really careful picking my zero points so that I could flip it and still reference the part correctly so that when I went to do that chamfer I could actually get the correct chamfer. It wasn't going to be offset in some way that would be really obvious in the chamfer. And it actually turned out pretty well. I'm always pretty happy when this works out. This is the final part. Um, so th what I didn't show here is I didn't show uh, drilling out the holes on the drill press because at the end of the CNC milling process I had the holes spotted, but that's all. So th then what I did is I took it to the drill press and used the, the divots from the spotting to align the drill into it. And I would drill it out, uh, and then I would also switch in my drill press to, to a countersink tool, which if, when you run it over the hole would uh, put a chamfer on it. And then where I needed to, uh, here on, on the hole on the right, I would um, get the tap and tap that just with a, a hand drill. This is thin enough that I'm not too worried about it. I actually really like the uh, the gun taps for these types of through holes, which will shoot the chips forward, and it makes it just uh, super easy to, to tap. And because the of the chamfer that I put on into the when I was drilling the hole, it, there's actually a slight lead into the thread as well, which is pretty nice. And that's it.